and uh, we'll let Dion maybe just introduce herself a little bit and then we'll pass over to Alex. All right, so I'm Dion Walker um, and um, I've been involved in the uh, film, media, arts world for over well over 28 years or 20 odd, I'll just say 20 odd years. And, um, and, uh, and um, more recently, I've been uh, producing documentary films, and, which includes um, uh, one project titled The Hard Stop. Um, the story took us behind the UK riots in 2011, um, and the film did fairly well. Um, I, uh, it got a BAFTA and BIFA nomination. I mean, I was um, nominated as a breakthrough producer for it. And so um, that's kind of scale my background and where I'm, I am in relation to um, documentaries. Uh, in terms of my personal interests, I'm interested in, uh, I did a second master's. So um, in 2010, I went back to um, university, Edinburgh University, and um, and studied uh, uh, human geography, arts, history, and essentially um, decided to look and investigate cities. And so on the back of um, going back to college and coming up to Scotland, um, <laughs> I decided to start exploring uh, the what's going on into the world via our kind of urban spaces and this led me to um, the project the hard stop and and making documentaries um, yeah i'm going to stop there <laughs> yeah and alex maybe you could uh um maybe you could sort of uh take over a little bit here Yes, of course. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dion, for joining us. Um, I watched The Hard Stop a few years ago at Document Film Festival, and it was, uh, I remember the screening was packed. I remember there was a very engaging Q&A afterwards and the masterclass. The masterclass is actually still available on our YouTube channel, on SDI's YouTube channel, if you want to have a look and if you have a chance to watch the, the film as well. And um, yeah, it was very interesting because um, it was, it feels like it was as relevant then, the film as it is today. Uh, so I'm really excited to talk about, you know, exploring, making films about such important and urgent issues and also, you know, the process of becoming the documentary filmmaker, producer and director um, and how that goes. And also, yeah, how it is like working in the industry, getting into the industry and, um, yeah, getting funding and all these things. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, these things today. Um, and speaking of that, you know, um, encouraging diversity uh, in documentary filmmaking, uh, the program that um, is very new in our kind of opportunities section is called New Voices. Um, and it's a six month mentoring and professional development program for women and non-binary filmmakers based in Scotland. Um, it's actually, the deadline is uh, next Monday, um, or is it Sunday actually? Yeah, it's Sunday, the 16th of August. Um, and, you know, it's a six month um, opportunity for, for filmmakers to get a sense of, you know, to find basically their voice, to find the confidence in, in working in the industry and in, uh, finding, you know, um, meeting people, knowing how to um, approach their, their career. Um, there's more information on our website, um, on SDI's website under opportunities. Um, so you can find more information there. We also have two uh, coffee mornings, basically, in which we, we talked about those opportunities in more detail. Um, but basically, yeah, we want to encourage everyone to, um, to try these, um, you know, opportunities and to find solutions maybe to the obstacles that they face along the way. Um, and I guess this leads me actually to the first question to you, Dion, um, and maybe taking a bit, going a bit back to, you know, when you started uh, or when you tackled your kind of the hard stop um, 
as a producer, um, how is it like, you know, uh, working, getting into this industry? Did you encounter any sort of obstacles or um, challenges along the way? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there, but also doubt there were obstacles. I mean, so, so for starters, the, um, in developing the hard stop, um, you know, it's quite controversial uh, subject. It's covering a kind of quite a um, uh, incendiary uh, issue, or I say issue in terms of uh, uprising that happened, and so that it you know it took some manoeuvring. Uh, certainly, you know, in, in the in the early stages of pitching the project, you know, we'd get quite you know, get kind of closed door situation and um, for a very long time. So we came across the obstacles of uh, um, I th you know, I mean, it could, it, I would say possibly it was related to um, not just a subject matter, but, you know, the, the fact that it was uh, too, um, in, you know, of, um, me being a filmmaker of color and um, being new, so your program is quite interesting because obviously, as, as a new voice, you're trying to break through um, the barrier of uh, new versus older uh, individuals who are far more experienced. And so, um, the it was just it was just it was a long and tiring process. Uh, um, but eventually, uh, uh, individuals in the kind of documentary space, um, an institution in the documentary space who really are for um, uh, pro, uh, films and um, who are looking to support uh, uh, projects that is about uh, justice and um, fighting um, inequality, eventually came on board. And once one uh, institution, for example, Bertha came on board, we applied to, you know, we applied across the board and once Bertha came on board and Sundance um, Institute came on board, then it was a domino effect. But um, prior to that, it was very difficult. And, it, um, and I think it was down to a number of things, which includes um, the fact that my, you know, I, I didn't have that um, the experience of producing doc, you know, uh, documentaries of this nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I was wondering actually, um, how did you find the access to these institutions? And also, did you have any sort of support in the form of like mentors or people who helped you along the way, gave you a kind of a direction or an idea of where to to start making these approaching such institutions so as i was saying in terms of funding when we brought on when uh bertha sundance and then eventually the um, british film institute and then you have doc society um came on board those they kind of open up a wide network so and that they and they were very supportive you know they understand this is their their you know they've been doing this for a long time dealing with um uh, projects that is you know is kind of possibly uncomfortable for some people and you know so we felt supported um once they were on board um, sorry, what was the other part of the question? If you have, if you had kind of any mentors who supported you along the way, any people so, yeah. to draw inspiration from? Mm -hmm. So as I said, I think broadly we had a whole range. So uh, certainly with the, um, the hard stop, there was, you know, it went through like labs and through that we met um, certain executives we you know met a number of other filmmakers who would give their voices uh, you know they'll give their uh feedback on the various stages it went through um 
and um, also there was a, sorry, I shouldn't also mention um, Bertha Dockhouse because we all, I, you know, um, went through their uh, work in progress uh, screenings and that was quite supportive. Uh, so, you know, I'm, instead I'm not going to name individuals, but I'll just say there were a lot of individuals who were part of these institutions or these organizations that helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I was wondering actually, because for the heart, you've had different roles for different films. So for the hard stop, you were a co-writer and a producer. Um, I've read also about some of your other projects that are in development, uh, such as Invisible Woman 2.0, uh, where you're a director. So I was wondering, yeah, if you can tell a bit, tell us a bit more about you know these different roles. How do you find each role? What are the kind of differences between them? Uh, what are the different challenges attached to each kind of role? Well, uh, I think it's it's. I mean, uh, doc, when it comes to documentary, as a producer, you're kind of creative producer, and certainly I am a creative producer. So my role wasn't. Um, you know, exec produced where I was completely far removed from the subject and the, the creative process. So it's not, I don't find it difficult to also get involved with, you know, a kind of Neapolitan invisible and where you are all, you're kind of uh, speaking to subject direct and, um, and, uh, and possibly filming them direct, filming the individuals direct, because I did some of that, I mean, to a very tiny scale with the hard stop. So, you know, certainly in terms of, I mean, I, I'm, I think you can appreciate that uh, in a number of cases, you do have producer, director, uh, people who tend to direct their documentaries is also producing it. So similarly, you have, um, in, in, in the case of the hard stop that I was producing, but I, I was also in, very much involved in crewing up, in, in um, getting, uh, in, in coordinating interviews, uh, in, in one case actually f holding the camera. So I'm, it's, it wasn't a, a kind of, um, it wasn't difficult to actually uh, step into the role of um, stand, you know, saying, okay, so I'm going to coordinate interview, uh, an interview for the subject in Invisible Woman or, uh, and speak to someone there or coordinate and, and shoot uh, someone uh, in the, in, uh, for this project I'm working on called Neapolitan. Um, so, uh, it's not, I mean, I think that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. And could you tell us a bit more about these uh, projects that you mentioned, uh, Neapolitan and Invisible Woman? What are they about? Uh, what are you exploring with them? So in, in Neapolitan is, um, I'm looking at the world we inhabit at the moment um, via cities. So the kind of log line is, um, Oh, you know, I'm grappling with um, our brand spanking new world. And it's, it's a project that's trying to make sense of um, how we live in terms of we live in local and um, national and global at the same time. Um, how we live between virtual lives and um, physical. Um, as well as well as what in uh, within the context of certain politics that's playing out, uh, not least uh, you kind of have Brexit and uh, what's going on in the, the you know the world as in in America, China, and other parts of the world. Um, it also grapples with um, our kind of uh, new identities. Um, uh, personal and social and cultural identities and so it's it's 
you know, it's a few things, so it's fairly multi-layered. Um, but in the end, the, uh, it's absolutely a portrait of uh, how we um, as uh, individuals, as um, uh, uh, nationals, are coping with this ever-changing world, you know. So it includes COVID as well, because of course, and it includes what we're doing here, as in, we, crucially, how we are having to come up with new ways of thinking, new ways of um, doing, new ways of finding employment. It's, you know, so it, it does have the, you know, it's not just the kind of everything is, 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 is polished and, 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 um, and luxurious and, uh, you know, and you put on a face. It looks at um, some of the kind of urban decay and um, tries to make a, a sense of uh, how that's being transported into our lives and our, the world, even um, online, you know, looking at some of the, the uh, negative uh, things um, around uh, moving into a kind of online space. Um, it looks at the positive and, uh, but also, uh, juxtapose that with the negative with the negative as in you know what if I think these days they are talking about um, how the aged for example isn't able to um, is having less uh, is less able to access the online space and some people you know, who don't have Wi-Fi, for example, isn't able to access this space. What do we do about that? Um, so as a project, it's looking at, uh, it's trying to make sense of, of these things. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and um, I was wondering, it seems because the films that you've been working on have such multi-layered um, stories um, with, with the hard stop you have the kind of the two characters Mark Duggan's uh, friends um, as a lead into kind of a story that has wider implications and about police brutality and about the history of how that kind of perpetuates a sort of poverty and violence and um, conflictual relationship with the police and also uh, this film that you mentioned Neapolitan also has different layers um, to it, um, how uh, and I've I've read that you also talk a lot about kind of a creative approach in, to documentary, uh, engaging with kind of hybrid, more hybrid forms of documentary. So I was wondering, yeah, if you could tell us a bit about, you know, how why you find this approach interesting, how you know to telling social and political issues. Um, can you talk a bit about the process of engaging creatively with kind of truth? Stories. Yeah. I think for me the idea is to get to a, a truth and there are times where uh, I think where you have the space to do that through pure observational um, documentary making it's fine as in so if you have access and you can do it um, where you know access to the characters and you um, and that time period um then absolutely you may stick to that one form you may you may think well you know we just go straight up obs uh, observational um there are other times and, and it, i think it depends on the subject um where you might need to do some form of hybrid um to to tell the story and so you might move from uh you know i mean it's it's like a kind of forms of reenactment, you know, or find other means of telling a particular part of the story. Um, and so, so for example, as you were saying, with the hard stop, we felt it was necessary, you know, we were telling 
what uh well was effectively we're kind of telling four different stories we told the story of mark duggan's death through the in inquiry we told us the story of um it's his childhood friends and their what i would say progressive story so you'd be kind of going forward with that and then we told the story also of kind of broadwater farm so that kind of urban space and what's happened within that urban space um it's historical issues with the police and then you know where you know the kind of times they've rioted and so on and so um there were there were like multi multi layer uh, not just multi layered but multi story strands um and but you know but it, we created um uh, uh we told that the story for that subject um in that way because it somehow that's how that story needed to be told um you know for a project like uh say for example invisible woman which um is you know it's about women uh you know largely it's about the the dynamic nature of women and and liberty and how we um uh you know and how we uh we can be quite persistent about um seeking and finding our own liberty um, and, and having our own agency this you know to develop uh, that story the invisible woman story will i would say would need completely different lens to do, do so so one would be looking for a different techniques so you know yes it's a story about immigrant women and um and tr trying to uh might find themselves caught into different things but really are trying to find a way of um cutting through some of that and and having certain liberties you know you, you may find it's a more free flowing or you, you show difficult parts but it's also free flowing um i mean still don't know what the, the full techniques would be for that but i just know it, it's Get, it would be tackled in a different way because it's a different subject and certainly in terms of dive you know the diversity with that project you're dealing with women and um and his, you know you're dealing with black and brown you're dealing with different it's just a different set of um complex but different set of uh ethnical and uh uh, potential uh, different identities, personal identities, and so you are exploring it um, in a different way. Um, Neapolitan <laughs> as a project uh, is, you know, so it's squaring com something different. So, for example, it may be square is squaring uh, uh, climate change as well as a big top as a big topic in the world it's squaring um more social economical and um environmental issues so i would say the technique uh, already i've thought about certain techniques but the technique there is would be completely different because you you know it's the focus is very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you mentioned um, kind of diversity and focusing on kind of women, on people of color. So I was uh, wondering if you can, yeah, just tell us why why is it important to you to give a voice to people of color and especially in documentary uh, film. Um, so of course I'm a woman of color, so and so I that's my identity, um, and but there's also the, I mean I'm a woman of color and, and that's my identity, but I I live in a, a a world and all my the projects I'm involved with is as far as I know considered the world I'm in, and 
it's, you know, you can obviously see that we, as a, a woman of color, for example, I'm constantly interacting with, with, with pe other people in the world. And so it, the projects do take that on board at all times. I, th I don't think you can make films now where you're not at all time uh, considering how we are with others in the world. So um, with the hard stop, subjects are black and brown, but they are also, uh, and the issues that came up there is about you know, racial injustice as well as um, you know, criminal injustice, etc. And the, the film is quite focused on that. But it's still there's still you still can see the context and you're still working with uh, in the film actually they they are interacting and the context of personal other pers other um, identities is in the, in the um, people of other ethnic backgrounds and other. Uh, uh, um, cultural backgrounds comes up in the film, even if it's just for a beat or so, because that's, I think it would be difficult to tell the story if you're not showing some of that, or it, it just, it would, I don't know, I don't, I don't think it resonates if you're not showing some of that real world outside of the micro, um, the, 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 uh, narrow story you're telling so um and it's something we do deliberately in um when uh, certainly in, i try to do that deliberately with uh the other projects i'm developing as well it's telling the trying as best to tell the the what i would call the the, the small story the local story the you know, where you keep to the subject and your focus, but have, but threading universal uh, storylines so that you have a under, it, it, you, un, well, you, in the end, you understand that it's this thing or what's happening here isn't happening um, in a vacuum. Uh, so, um, yeah, and in doing that, it does have, um, you're, you are catering to um, issues that's coming up at, uh, in the world. So for example, there's a project that I was, I, I was uh, uh, developing called Regents and Vicky, and it set along the Regents Canal. And, um, and that kind of big topic was, is supposed to be looking at climate change and, so on and kind of telling this visual story through um, kind of the various seasons, you know, so you see a kind of the canal in different seasons and you see the severity of um, the weather. Um, and, um, and you, you know, you're with uh, boaters, uh, narrow boaters, immediately in telling that story, the idea is you or you're also seeing uh, the boaters in various colors uh, as in um, ethnic background you know sexual orientation um, people in the world you know uh, um, and how they engage with each other you know outliers you know people who are on the peripheries um, so just to answer the 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 the, the uh, you know when I got invited to do this, the discussion around diversity in documentary, I think. I don't know. I think as documentary makers, we naturally um, seek to. Uh, I mean, the whole idea of you have a subject, uh, or you're following characters. You're trying to dig into who they are, um, trying to get to uh, kind of other parts, things that's slightly off screen. So, you, you know, certainly if you're doing observational documentary, you are 
speaking to them, you're, you're listening to what they have to say, but you're also trying to, to get to the, the um, kind of uh, wide context of who they are. And that normally includes um, individuals, individuals around them, people in the world, the world they're interacting in. And it's, which ultimately means that you're dealing with um, a range of other things, a, a diverse mix of, uh, in terms of the context. And uh, I will ask just one final question before we uh, look at um, questions that are, are coming from the audience. But um, speaking of the context um, and speaking of the current political uh, global movement of Black Lives Matter, especially what happens after the um, killing of George Floyd everywhere in the world, um, have you um, noticed any sort of uh, increased interest in the hard stop or in tackling these issues? Um, or a kind of a, do you think that uh, there's an increased um, attention from the audience or perhaps like the industry at large on, you know, uh, focusing on more of these topics um, and making more films, watching more films on these topics? Do you think there's a bigger audience now? I think the move, the Black Lives Matter movement is, is clearly, I mean, it's, it's, they've done a really good job. I mean, it's really unfortunate. I mean, the, the situation with George Floyd is, you know, it's devastating. And I don't think there's anyone who watched that video and didn't think this is just on a completely different scale and level. And, I, and, and of course, every, uh, there were, there's been protests across the world. Um, in the UK, um, I mean, I've, I myself have visited and, you know, just to, ob to observe. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's gained traction in, term, in the industry. Um, I think it's quite evident when you look at um, television and what, and there's now, as far as I can see, uh, you know, strands of films that is looking at racism, looking at um, issues around Black Lives Matter, looking at representation, um, and um, pro and the, and they seem to be an uh, idea of programming and commissioning new projects that speak to that. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the hard start, I. We haven't we haven't been asked um, uh, to show uh, on television, but we since um, the Black Lives Matter marches in the UK, we've been invited um, to show at various cinemas as part of from. I mean, it's the, in the invitation has come through um, the come from our backers, so. Um, the BFI, um, uh, they've, they want to show it again. We've had, you know, we've had a, a few requests from other festivals. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's, it's where they've, uh, it's, they've kind of brought this, you know, sustain, you could say, because the issue isn't going away. So they're, where the, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement is kind of like, look, we're, we're going to put this in your face and kind of keep it up. I think there's, it's, it's positive and, um, and we're getting some traction. Yeah. Good to hear. I think, uh, John, you want to lead out a few audience questions? Yeah. I mean, I have others, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I, 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 well, yeah, time is, time is ticking a little bit. I just had a, a sort of brief question myself, which was around, um, you know, getting any film made is, is not an easy thing. And I wonder, but I wondered, does it get any easier or not uh, when you've had films made already? So for example, your new films that you're working on, how was it, you know, finding, did you, did you go for funding first or did you start making them before you had funding and, and uh, you know, do people say, oh, well, we know you from the hard stop, so here's some money, or is it always difficult? So as a producer, um, 
I think um, the next step, so we could, you know, you're in the industry, it's very competitive. And I, you know, for me, I totally accept that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think if I, I mean, I'm looking at other um, directors to work with other directors and, um, and I, you know, I, I have a feeling that if, if I pitch projects by other directors who are quite, you know, um, well established, then I would be able to, I probably would have another three or four films um, funded. That's the okay. short answer. <laughs> okay. Um, the other, um, the longer answer is, if I'm trying to produce um, uh, something of my own project, then that probably that is that's more difficult. That's it in a nutshell because I'm not um, established as a director, and so I think in that sense you 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 do you use your own resources. You know you find other means and you. And it probably will take much longer, and that's understandable because that's how it is. Um, it's just a competitive environment, and um, and and I've seen it. I've seen other, you know, directors who um, who's uh, quite close to sub a subject or so it will take uh, years to complete something. <laughs> And so, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's it, uh, absolutely, it's difficult. It's not just automatic that you make this and it means that you're going to get your next one off the ground straight away. Yeah. Yeah, great. And I do have another question, but I don't know if it crosses over too much with this uh, audience question we've had. So why don't I ask this one first, which is um, mm -hmm. from Genevieve, who says, how do you ensure that you're objective and can remain detached when you're filming docs with such emotional, uh, sometimes uncomfortable stories? Um, yeah, it's very hard um, and you don't. Um, you do get attached. I mean, you know, it's hard to detach yourself, especially when you're, you're close to the subject matter, the, the, the character and, and it, and definitely when you're doing into um sort of internet um documentary making if it's that kind of documentary um um the, i think the the way you go about um um detaching yourself or kind of creating space is uh when you i, I would say when you get to the um the edit and you're working with editors and certainly if you're you've started to um, if you're in a lab or if you're working with um you know you have a kind of network of uh advisors and so you during that work you're able to create space and you know they advise you or you you get different feedback which is which allows you to to take a, a few steps back and start seeing it through different lens. When you're making the uh, documentary, and, and certainly this is my observation of working with George uh, Amponza, the director of The Hard Stop, and um, it's where, you know, during the process of actually working there, you, you have to give up yourself. So, um this it's almost a kind of one two and in early stages you do just yourself you allow yourself to get attached or you know and go through to process because you're 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 trying to get the subject to open up and to to, to tell their story and so you have to do that um and then come to, come the edit or in post-production you you have to completely um you could say remove yourself so much unless of course you're putting yourself in in the film but you find ways of of 
creating space. I love that. Thanks very much, Dion. Very helpful. Very helpful. <laughs> yeah, the question I had, um, I hope it's not too personal a question. Uh, if it is, you know, feel free not to answer it. But it's, we have had events in, in recent weeks talking about, um, I suppose, your own health and your mental health and well-being when it comes to making documentaries. And I just wondered when you were talking about Neapolitan which is taking in such huge issues and very current issues that we're all living through. You know, I watch the news and I have to switch off sometimes after 10 minutes because uh, it's so, it's just so terrible. Uh, and I, and then I feel bad because I think I need to know what's going on in the world. But when you are talking about so many different issues in this, in this project, how do you kind of get into that mental state where you're with it all the time? And do you, you know, do you have to so, somehow, I don't know, how do you detach yourself from the real world when you're working with it? Does that make sense? You know, what, what are you doing to look after yourself and not get depressed and beaten down and, and think this is just terrible? Um, it's, no, I mean, I think some things, I think, I don't know, I think in the news, you, even in how they, they um, curate the news, there are, I mean, I've always actually, perhaps I should tackle it this way. I've always been fascinated with um, news anchors and how they, you know, in some sense, they're almost like doctors whereby, you know, um, they come upon, um, they're having to, to speak on and, uh, you know, discuss sometimes, you know, you have death, crisis, you know, in, a, in one night or in one news program, they're having to, to deal with that, as well as the kind of good news story, if you know what I mean. And, yeah. and uh, so I've always been impressed as well, you know, they, they almost have to, I guess, in an, in an hour, shift how they look, how they speak, how, how they, you know, engage with the subject. And, um, and I don't know, I mean, <laughs> I wonder how they, they, when they do that and they finish a report, how they kind of um, deal with it sitting down. Because especially, I suppose, especially if it's um, in that hour when they, they work, there's a like really grueling moment um, uh, and um, you know, I guess you know you may watch a film certainly what I do so I interact with documentary and look at some of the dark and um, uh, kind of serious crisis that we're facing but then I'll go off and watch a fiction film or you watch a kind of a piece of comedy or you do things that take your mind away from it. It's not that it's not still in focus, but you just um, do a, a small amount of escapism just to, so that you keep, um, you keep well <laughs> and you don't go to bed all the time thinking um, about those circumstances. But it's difficult when you're making documentary, you, you end up living with it. I mean, so during the process of making, um, just as an example of the hard stuff, you kind of, certainly when it was being edited, you live with it, you wake up, you know, you kind of, you think, because you're constantly thinking, not just about the issue in itself and how it's affecting people, you know, you also think about, um, how you're going to tell the story in a way which uh, um, delivers the message and um, and so on. I don't know my 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 well-being. I I do I compartmentalize. So to to get back to the answer, I, I find ways to compartmentalize. Good, good. Well, that's advice for everybody, really, isn't it? But as I say, it's just when you're talking about all these. You know, it's everywhere at the moment. Everything's everything's everywhere. We've got so many things going on in the world. Um, so it's great that your your uh, you know your next film is uh, is looking at all this. But we do have another question actually uh, in the chat there. Yeah. Um, from Uganda, who says, "Thank you for sharing your story and experience. 
it's inspiring to see you making things happen. Uh, what would you say to someone who's starting out? Who, who are the best backers for international stories? Wow, so it depends on the, the actual subject of the story, um, you know, and international. So, I mean, I've worked with and um, with from USA, Canada um, to to kind of Eastern Europe to just all, to Europe generally. Um, you have the Creative Europe Fund. You have um, and in terms of documentary, that they do look after feature docs. Um, there's a Doc Alliance that you know looks across Eastern uh, Eastern Central Europe. Um, there's Med. There uh, in terms of Africa, um, uh, we have. There's a, a Bertha kind of a world fund um, that covers uh, Africa as well. Um, I was in a conversation a meeting with um, Doha Institute. They seem to have something going on there that speaks. They have an international fund as well as a, um, and they also run a lab. Um, um, so that's that side of the world. Um, in the UK, Duck Society, they have different funds. They have the BFI fund, which is kind of national, um, but they also have international funds. So you track them. You have Ford Foundation. Um, they do, uh, again, they, they have American they have stores. They, they uh, give funding to stories in America, but they also have international bases. Um, there's a, there's a Canada, there's Hot Docs. Again, they have an international fund as well as the Canadian fund. Um, the Scottish, you know, there's the Scottish Institute. <laughs> and there's, <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean, I, did, I was going to say that first because I am speaking <laughs> with Scot the Scottish in Doc Institute. Um, and the great work that you guys do. Um, and we're, again, very thankful for um, the invitation and working with us on the hard stop. I mean, we really um, found the, uh, you know, the in interview, the masterclass interview, interesting. And was, you know, I mean, I've watched a few times because um, it's kind of, it's an interesting documentary in itself, just in terms of, um, giving you a kind of idea it's like okay so this is what we spoke about when the doc um documentary was released and um i don't know though do you guys have in internet um international you don't have an international fund do you no. uh no we don't no we have the edinburgh pitch and that oh, is for true. international filmmakers uh, okay. for them to pitch their projects but otherwise yeah we're focusing on kind of Scottish-based filmmakers. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I mean, I think largely most of the funds, um, certainly when I look across the world, they will have, um, you know, funds that's catering to um, national uh, filmmakers, but some will have a kind of international forum or international fund. I hope that answers your question. I think it does. She, uh, Igana said, uh, it's a, she, she's Scottish based, but it's an international story. Um, mm. No, it's the same because, so you have Sundance Institute, for example, if you have a local story, uh, as like the hard stop, they, but it has a kind of universal theme. So it depends on what your story is. Um, then they're interested, as far as I know. You know, certainly, and especially if it's scaling a, quite a um, a topic that they feel resonate not just with 
in America, but across the world, then they, I think they'll look at it. Do you mind saying what the story is? Yes, um, it's actually along the line of your invisible woman side of okay. stories. And so, um, as you discussed, the diverse topic, um, it's looking into race, racial and social, historical um, terminology term, uh, the word Mongol, uh, my ethnicity is Mongol and my identity, I call myself a Mongol. So I am a Mongol Scot, really, you know. Um, but the word Mongol has different um, connotations depending on where you are from and what kind of knowledge and, I guess, understanding of the world you have. So my story is actually the personal one. My son had Down syndrome and he died. Uh, so I wrote my memoir in memory of him and made radio documentaries with BBC Radio 4 and the World Service. So I'm trying to make a TV documentary because people think the BBC documentary is a film and wants to see it. So I thought it's better to make it into a film or a TV documentary. So that's what, what that's my journey, journey is at the moment. So I'm just trying to make it happen. And I apply for the new voices. So hopefully, <laughs> somebody will an interview. Hopefully, they will pick me. But we will see. Thank you. Yeah. No, it, I mean, it sounds interesting straight away. I mean, both your identity and, um, and, and sorry to hear about your son, I'm fortunate. Um, both your identity and the issues of Down syndrome and stuff is, is, can be fleshed out and become, so it becomes a kind of multi-layered thing and, and it sounds interesting. Yes, thanks for, thanks for sharing that, that with us. Um, we only have a couple of minutes left uh, and you did mention, well, um, uh, New Voices was mentioned there, so I'll maybe just plug it once again just to say it does close on Sunday, so time is, is ticking. Uh, but applications can be made via uh, written applications or, or video. You know, you can record things now as well. So for some people that might be, feel a bit more comfortable with that. Um, and also if people are, you can also apply at the same time for Bridging the Gap, which opens the week, at, well, next week on Tuesday. Um, so we'll be running another coffee morning next Tuesday. Bridging the gap, although New Voices is for women and, uh, and non-binary filmmakers, uh, Bridging the Gap is for everybody to apply for. So perhaps that might also be something worth looking at, uh, Yugana, um, and anyone else that's watching, if you, if you want to try that as well. You'll double, double your, your chances in a way of, uh, of, uh, of getting some assist assistance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got one minute to 11. I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us, Dion. Uh, yeah. It's been fascinating. Um, you've, you've told us so much and, and shared so many uh, um, ideas. And I think it's, it's inspiring actually for, for people to, 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 you know, to, to try their own things. Anything, yeah. you want to, anything you want to say, Alex, just before we go any... You had... Yeah, I just wanted to thank you very much, uh, Dion, for, for sharing different kind of experiences and uh, it was very inspiring and um, yeah I would like to invite people to watch actually the hard stop if it's available I think on Amazon Prime and on BFI player uh, right. probably. but if there are any other platforms uh, yeah let us know and we'll we'll share those alongside with this recording yeah. right thanks thanks for having me and, and I might have to come to you about the recording just in terms of for my Neapolitan project, I might have to include this, but um, I'll know where to come, right? <laughs> absolutely, see. absolutely, yes. And I did put a link in the in the chat there for your Q and A that you mentioned um, from twenty sixteen. So if people want to watch that, uh, I'll also put a link on Facebook as well. Um, so yeah, once again, thank you, and thanks for everyone for joining us. Um, and good luck with your your next project, uh, Dion. Okay. Maybe we could have you back, hopefully in person, to talk about it. But if well, as in physically, yeah. if, if not, then maybe we get you back on Zoom again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>